Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of pop culture, sports, social media, and of course wrestling. It is our hashtag week of wrestling. I'm pleased to be joined by a professional wrestler. He is the leader of the kingdom and ring of honor, Matt Taven. Matt, welcome to Pop Turnative. Yes, yes, yes. How are we doing, everyone? Good to be here. For sure. So we talked a little bit off air as well. Um, out for nine months with an injury. Um you know, it, one of those things where I can't even imagine, you know, being on the sidelines, you know, wanting to kind of watch everything. But, I mean, talk a little bit about um, what's been, what's happened since you've been back from this big injury. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy to think, uh, you know, it's been over a year since I've been back. Um, and, you know, I was jokingly telling family members over Christmas that I probably came back too early, but you know, uh, at the same time, it's one of those things that you look back on. You're like, I'm glad I did. You know, if I had the extra time, sure. That probably would have helped in the long run. But uh, I came back after nine months, um, basically to a CMML tour in Mexico. Um, you know, I had, I had planned on coming back to ring of honor in October. And that was, that was something that me and my physical therapist and my surgeon had kind of planned out, you know, originally they wanted, me to be out even longer but uh you know i, I kind of wasn't hearing any of that so um you know october was kind of the scheduled date and out of the blue you know cmml uh reached out to me about doing a tour down there and it was one of those things where yeah, i've grown up a, a lifelong wrestling fan since i was a kid so uh you know going down to arena mexico and doing something uh in that building and with that company uh, is is something that I've I've thought about doing since I was a child. You know, a lot of my my heroes, a lot of my favorite wrestlers did, did the same thing. So uh, I jumped on the opportunity and kind of you know put rehab into into overdrive and made it happen. Um, you know, and a lot of people, especially for like athletes, if they're coming back from an ACL tear, a lot of people say like that first year back is kind of, you know, you're still figuring out the, how your knee's going to react, working out the kinks and stuff. And I kind of thought that, ah, I'd, I'd be fine. And uh, just recently I kind of started been feeling myself again. And I was like, man, it really did take like a year of being back before I, I felt like, you know, okay. I, I, I have some more confidence in, in this knee that I, you know, did previously, but man, in that year, year and three months, it's been since I, uh, um, since I've been back. I mean, pulled off a lot of stuff, a lot of successful tours in Mexico. The first ever six man tag team, you know, final battle ended 2017 um, on a high note. So uh, you know, I'm pretty happy if that if that was my bounce back year and probably going to be the toughest year of of coming back from the injury. I, it went the way I wanted it to. Well, we're happy you're back. I mean, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, speaking to a lot of other wrestlers, I mean, it just seems these last couple of years, it's just an unbelievable time to be a pro wrestler. I mean, it, oh, it, you you just see, you know, the talent um, from all over the globe at these the local shows and these indie promotions, and it's just amazing. What do you think has... Um, what have you noticed in terms of the successful, successful transitions of wrestling over the last three years like what has changed in um from uh from like doing it you know three four years ago which has made it kind of better well i think the biggest thing is social media and the fact that people can get their stuff out there and get it to a you know an audience of hundreds of thousands even millions in some cases so you know with social media you're able to kind of make yourself and uh really put yourself out there and i know you know us with the kingdom you know we try to jump on that that um try to jump on the social media wave as well with uh, you know some of the videos that we've done and stuff but uh, you know guys don't really need the the platform of tv even though tv helps and you know that's ultimately where you're trying to go but you can make your name getting there uh through social media now where before it was you know a lot of 
networking and getting out there in front of the right people, now you can really make a name for yourself just just on your own accord, um, which has really helped. And then, you know, with with every uh, promotion, uh, being able to do streaming services, you know, just just in the Northeast where I'm from alone, you know, from Northeast Wrestling to Beyond Wrestling to all these different uh, places. And now, like, you got stuff like Powerbomb TV and, you know, the Fight app has a million different uh, companies on it it's just it's as a wrestling fan you you can't go anywhere without finding wrestling and without finding uh something that you're looking for so you know thank god that uh you know there there is such a platform for all the wrestlers out there now because um you're finding people from all around the world that you might not have found you know i'm sure like the will ospreys and stuff the guys that are just absolutely you know phenomenal athletic freaks would would still make it out there but there's the england scene alone has blown up so much and a lot of those guys i would say five six years ago probably you know wouldn't have made such a such a big impact as they do now but because of the internet and because of all these different streaming services um you're able to just see so much talent out there absolutely i'm just gonna refresh because you you got a bit pixelated so i'm just gonna refresh it we're still recording and edit it out it's all good Yeah, it's better. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, absolutely. With all adult social media is a game changer for professional wrestling. A couple of things that I wanted to talk to you about specifically, because we are with Matt Tave, we are with the leader of the kingdom, and it is it's an honor. From Ring of Honor, it's an honor to have you on the show. There um, you go. All puns intended. Of course. I mean a couple of things. There have been unbelievable rivalries. There, there, there have been unbelievable rivalries that you have been involved with, whether a singles, whether a tag team. It's just been amazing. And I understand that, you know, in wrestling storylines, they come and go, and you'll have a really big rivalry with someone, and then, you know, that rivalry is kind of put on the side or not acknowledged, and then you have, you see it in, like, WWE, right, where Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles have a huge rivalry, and then... Yeah. um Two months later, they, uh, AJ Styles comes on Raw as a special guest and tags with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. And yeah. it's like, it's ignored. Like, the rivalry is yeah. ignored. So I was just curious with you, and I'm sure you've seen the Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling. What do you think about, I mean, these feuds? Some of these are, like, huge feuds. And do you, like, what is your perspective from being in these feuds and then the feud's over? And then it's kind of a whole different angle. Because it's like, it's a, it's like a, a movie, right? There's different scenes. Yeah. But like, do you find sometimes that that's kind of weird, like from the wrestling pers- fan perspective, where you know- I, I, think, I, I think of course it's a little, um, you know, it's funny because, and again, I've been a wrestling fan since as long as I can remember, five, six years old, um, and wrestling fans, especially more than any other fan base, have such a long term memory that oh, it, yeah. <laughs> it seems it seems almost insulting sometimes like and the first example that just comes to mind and this is you know as a kid uh or you know as a teenager a young young teen um when Kane first debuted and you know it, it, it I I didn't realize who it was and stuff and uh you know it, it looked seemed like a whole new guy to me and they're trying to sell that this you know this guy's burnt and all this stuff and then within a few years he's talking and there's no mask on and you see he's not burned and and it's like well man that was only like three four years ago you you told you know what I mean I put all my my interest into this guy being burned um so yeah that that happens a lot uh, especially with, you know, the WWE having so much TV that a lot of times you kind of just have to go with the flow. Um, as far as myself, I'm, I've always been, I don't know, especially nowadays. And I feel weird saying this kind of like an old school mentality of, of like, uh, for example, me and Jay lethal, um, had a feud for years or yeah, for years in ring of honor and um you know recently we we met up in a singles match that really wasn't about matt taven versus jay lethal you know it was about the other things that maybe we had going on um elsewhere but to me and jay and i think both of our mindsets are are very similar um 
you know, this is this is an old rival right here. This is a this is a guy that's you know, I I spent months trying to to take down. So it was like we snapped right back into that old rivalry, um, and that's kind of the way I like it. You know, whether it's you know the the Bullet Club, um, you know, I've wrestled them for in all sorts of different matches and all sorts of different places for years as soon as we're back in the ring it's like all right this rivalry's back on um and that's the way i try to look at it um unfortunately with wrestling and guys getting injured and you know guys having to to, to be moved in different places sometimes you have to uh you know almost look past that and just kind of roll with the punches but you know what i mean though right like, of course yeah of course <laughs> um of course and, it's a very exciting thing and, and the because thing as wrestling fans, we're so like we're caught up in like we've invested in 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 every aspect of of whatever you know story is going on, and then you know when you just tell me to drop it and look the other way, it's like no. <laughs> like social media, like I mentioned, the Dean Ambrose, um, AJ Styles, like social media went ballistic on that because they had a pretty brutal feud. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, I also think, like, you know, wrestlers on social media alone, and this is a whole nother um, rant I'm probably going to go on, but, like, you know, like, I, 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 there's, there's something about, like, two guys in the ring, you know, killing each other, going through tables and hit each other with chairs, and then they go on Twitter and they're like, I'd just like to thank uh, my opponent tonight. <laughs> He's like, but, like, oh, how gross. Like, I mean, you know, you're you're putting your life on the line with these yeah. people. I'm not going to go and give them a, a verbal blowjob as soon as I get on Twitter. Like, that just seems kind of ridiculous to me. Yeah, I know. You see it. I mean, wrestling fans are really passionate. Um, the one thing about you, and I no one's really going to argue with me, but you um, in the ring obviously um, do a lot of wow factor things. But the one thing about you, we see it with the kingdom as well. We see it with a lot of your feuds. You know, your uh, ability to talk on the mic is is second to none. It's it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's one of those things that... I think it's one of those things that has allowed you to excel in certain uh, aspects of your of your career not 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 saying that your in ring is not great but you know your 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 um your promos the ability and i think that's big and i think that has become a big part i was talking to nathan cruz who's with progress wrestling in the uk and he says one of his favorite things right now about wrestling is outside the ring the promos the feuds all of that and I remember there's some moments where you and Adam Cole and your ability to kind of face him like like the way you do and, and talk and the, the sort of things you say. You don't even have to say a lot and you just, you have it. So was that something that, is that something, that's obviously something you take pride in, your mic skills, right? Like, I mean, wrestlers take pride in their mic skills, right? Matt? Oh, of course, of course. I mean, you know, when you get into wrestling, um, I was told this and I still tell everyone that, uh, you know, I ever give any advice to is that, you know, there's three major facets of, of being a successful wrestler. You got to have a look, you got to be able to wrestle and you got to be able to talk, you know, and I always thought that being able to talk was the weakest of my skills, like, um, especially when I first came in the ring of honor and, and even before then. And, uh, you know, me and Adam Cole, you know, our, our careers, yeah started a month apart from one another so i would always be like you know why why is adam cole getting this this spot and i'm not and uh you know it's like and then i'd watch his promos it's like ooh, it's because he can talk and so i made it a, a point to like really push myself to 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 i don't know bring up my promo game a little bit and then when i joined the kingdom you know it was kind of the it, i got a lot more comfortable you know, being with Adam and Mike and just the, the three and then and with Maria as well, the four of us just kind of, you know, talking like we normally would. Um, and I think a real thing that helped was, uh, you know, a lot of guys, uh, they're they're not, they're like, oh, how do I say things as a, as a wrestler? You know, as a wrestler, how would I say this? And, you know, a lot of my friends, especially anyone that's ever been in a competitive situation with me, if it's, you know, playing catch or playing NBA 2K or stuff knows that I just talk and talk and talk <laughs> and just talk so much trash to everyone. And, uh, you know, all my friends growing up were like, why don't, why don't you just say this kind of stuff to people? 
And, uh, you know, I think it was a real kind of like, you know what, that's it. You know, I just need to, to, to do me and not really care. And that's where stuff like Melvin's came from. Melvin's was something that I used to call my friends, you know, when I thought they were being a dork. Oh, you're a Melvin. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, you're nothing but dust, kid. Like, just <laughs> that kind of stuff I had to bring to, you know, to to my, my wrestling persona and then i really felt like okay i'm comfortable in my shoes now and then i just could let it rip the one thing and i'm really curious to see your answer on this because it you know um it varies depending on certain wrestlers and the kind of where they are in their careers but you know you're seeing um the wrestling uh the wrestling industry is changing um it is it's a great time uh, like we said, to be a professional wrestler. And, you know, a lot of people do want to go to the WWE and do want to go to NXT. Um, and, you know, a lot of people that you know and that, you're, um, that you've are that wrestled, you know, Adam Cole, Red Dragon, Kyle Riley, Bye Fish, they're over there. This I'm sure that gives you kind of motivation one day if you were interested in kind of going to the WWE because you see a lot of people that they're happy, you know, with the organizations they were that are in right now, like Kenny Omega and New Japan Pro Wrestling, you know. But I'm sure that gives you like there's like a motivation and about wow, you know, like I'm I could be there one day, you know. I was with these guys and now they're at the next level. Like, what do you think about that? Does Matt Taven ever think about stuff like that, or do you just kind of do? I don't, your own I don't thing? think it's necessarily. I don't think it's necessarily. I could be there one day. As far as like any, any of us could be there right now. You know what I mean? And it's like, and it's you know like what we talked about earlier, where you know social media and the internet has really allowed people to do things for themselves. And really, if you want to put you know, the effort into your character or your persona, um, you can do that. Everything that you see from the kingdom is 110% from from our mind. You know what I mean? Everything that Matt Taven does is 100% from my mind. Mm -hmm. And I have no one telling me um, to do this or do that or not do this. I mean, obviously, there's been things I've tried to get away with on TV that I've I've gotten in <laughs> trouble for. But, uh, but for the most part, you know, it's... Um, you know, I'm really left to be as creative as I want to be and as I am naturally, which is why I really like, you know, the spot that I am and that I'm in. And there was, you know, there's been a couple times where I've weighed out situations of, you know, what's the best place for me? Should I go here? Should I go there? And um, it's been home to me. They took um, unbelievable care of me when I got and, and there's a pride in me that uh, Ring of Honor is on the way up and they're they're growing and they're getting bigger and attendance is getting bigger. And I want to be, you know, part of that revolution that continues this upward trend of Ring of Honor. So, you know, uh, it, in my mind, if they're if Ring of Honor and WWE have that Monday Night Wars type scenario one day, then you're in. That's that's you know what I mean? That's exactly the 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 point that I want to be at. But not just that is that I want also you know say that I was here from ground zero. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was here from from the infancies of of this this upward trend, and I was part of the building blocks to really bring it to where it is. So to see Ring of Honor continue to grow and grow and grow, and uh, you know the the home and the family that. Uh, I have there with my kingdom. It's it's a place that, you know, it's kind of hard to walk away from. And uh, honestly, right now, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. That's great. I mean, we had Beer City Bruiser on a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about um, Ring of Honor and NX, like NXT had a show um, like the same weekend as Ring of Honor in, a sa in the same yeah. city. And Ring of Honor like overdrew the NXT event. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, it was San Antonio yeah. it was, uh, last last month, and, um, you know, and NXT brought out Shawn Michaels as the guest referee to try to hurt the Ring of Honor house, and, and you know, it's, it's, I'm not saying anything out of turn here, we whooped their ass, and, you know, the numbers show it. Uh, you know, the amount of people that were there compared to the amount of people that packed uh, our building in San Antonio, it doesn't even compare. So um, you've seen, you know, NXT try to go into buildings that ring of honor is is normally you know in and they've tried to go into the same areas that ring of honor is in like on the same loop times 
Um, and it hasn't hurt us one bit. So it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, come bring it, bring it on. You know, we're, we're absolutely fine. And the thing, the thing that I don't think a lot of people realize is that, you know, stuff like NXT and, um, you know, you know, SmackDown or Raw or whatever the case may be, every time they bring in someone new, like let's say, for example, they bring in Adam Cole and you've never heard of Adam Cole before and you're all of a sudden a big Adam Cole fan. Well, guess what? When you Wikipedia Adam Cole or when you search out Adam Cole, you're going to find Ring of Honor immediately. Mm -hmm. And now you just brought more eyes over to Ring of Honor. I did not so, think of that. That is, that's interesting. So, I mean, you know, bring you know, put put Fish and O'Reilly, and I love those guys. They're they're great friends of mine and stuff. And you know, I talk to them all the time, uh, and I'm had unbelievably happy for them. But put Fish and O'Reilly on your show; it's just going to bring more people to to Ring of Honor. So, yeah, that, that's amazing. Well, I think we'll wrap up. But um, Matt Taven, thank you so much for coming on our show, man. This is this has been awesome. No, thank you, man. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. I had a good time. No, absolutely. What's next for Matt Taven in 2018? Well, uh, you know, the next stop for Ring of Honor is Nashville um, in January. And, uh, you know, the, the next couple of months of, of TV have already been have been taped in the week, day after Final Battle. So I won't try to give too many spoilers, but uh, a Matt Taven, Cody Rhodes, a Matt Taven, Dalton Castle. Oh. You know, any one of those feuds is going to be popping up real soon. So um, Dalton Castle. You know, all the all the people that are out there supporting the kingdom, uh, you know, keep letting your voices be heard. Keep telling the people um, that this kingdom conspiracy, you're you're against it and you're going to do everything you can to fight against it. Where can people follow you on social media? Uh, you can follow me if you know how to spell Taven, which, God, I hope you do. T-A-V-E-N. That's Matt uh, Tavern, right? Tavern, yeah. yeah with an R. If you spell Tavern, you're dumb. <laughs> So if you know how to spell Taven, you can find me on any social media, Matt Taven on Facebook, Matt Taven on Twitter, the Matt Taven on Instagram, Matt Taven at Gmail. Um, so, you know, T-A-V-E-N. And, um, you know, if you don't know how to spell that. I've really seen gotta... people that have put Tavern, though. As, like, oh, I, like, where does, but where does the R, like, why? Like, where does the I, R come I, from? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I understand, like, if you, you know, you're, you're typing in, your your phone automatically changes it or something. But I've seen people put on, like, posters, like Matt Tavern. I've, like, hey, I'm not I'm not Matt Tavern, so I'm not going to wrestle there unless that <laughs> gets changed. But, uh. Oh, man. Something similar to that, too, like, poster-wise. One of my friends used to be in a band called Chasing Amy, and they played at a, yeah. they played a local show. And there's another band called Chasing Amy, and on the posters, <laughs> they have the other Chasing Amy. <laughs> Both. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I mean, you know, when you name yourself after a classic '90s movie, you gotta. Yeah, there was like another happen. one, and they put the other. I mean, it's it was crazy. Like we were laughing so hard. But yeah, thank you so much, and all the best in 2018 for Matt Taven. I said it right. There you go. Perfect. Well, you go. this has been Pop Turnative. You can catch previous episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Please give us. Uh, uh, please subscribe. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Week of Wrestling, like I said, seven days, seven episodes of with wrestlers. So until next time, this is Matt Taven and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.